All right, good morning. Today we talk about testing vocabulary. Oops, sorry. I pressed the wrong button. Yeah. Before we start, let's answer this question. Mm -hmm. Why should we test vocabulary? And what is the purpose of vocabulary tests? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so why? You can write in the chat box if you wish. Oops. <laughs> so what's the purpose of testing vocabulary? All right. The purpose of vocabulary test is to measure comprehension or recognition if they understand, yeah, and production of so if they can use those words in their speech, yeah, or in their writing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. They want to learn the vocabulary size, yeah. Okay. And uh, there are two types of vocabulary: active and passive. So, and what's the difference between active and passive vocabulary? We use every day. That's it. That's correct. Active vocabulary is the one that we can use in our speech. Mm -hmm. Passive is the one that we understand but not necessarily are able to produce. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sungat nailed it. Yeah, That's it. absolutely right. And uh, we uh, usually use pass uh, multiple choice technique with passive vocabulary because students don't have to produce, they just have to recognize and select the appropriate answer. So multiple choice test is one of the best ways to, to check passive vocabulary, right? So here's the difference. Active vocabulary is the one that learner is able to use in speaking and writing. Passive, the one that he is, it can uh, recognize and he doesn't have to necessarily produce them really. All right. So here we have uh, oral and written vocabulary. Yeah. Active and uh, passive. It's like passive listening and passive reading. Yeah. As well. Which type of vocabulary should we test? What do you think? Active or passive? Who should we test more? Or what should we test? Actually, yeah, both. Yeah, we should test both. <laughs> not only active or not only passive. Uh, it's a tricky question, yeah? So we should test both. <clears throat> but uh, in most tests, yeah, well, usually passive vocabulary is tested. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But actually, we should test both. Uh, because tests shouldn't only test, tests should also teach. And, and if we want our students to learn active vocabulary, uh, we should have uh, quizzes. Yeah? Uh, because in many cases, tests, uh, assessments, uh, they are the driving force of learning. If you don't test, uh, if you don't give assignments, uh, students just simply don't learn. Maybe they learn, but they don't put a lot of effort in that. Yeah? And again, we should look at the learning outcomes if, of our course. If, for example, we are preparing our students for uh, IELTS, then we actually should, but again, we should focus on both, right? Because we need passive vocabulary for reading part, where students have to read. Um, one, one text in IELTS, as you know, is academic, very academic, yeah? So they must be able to recognize those words, understand them. But in the writing part, again, they need active vocabulary. Uh, they need active vocabulary to write and they need active vocabulary to speak. Okay. Sources of words to test. Yeah. So which word should we select for teaching? Should we just simply select any words that we uh, 
uh, can think of, or they should be kind of specific source. What do you think? Which source should we use while choosing words for the cast? Any sources? It might be, of course, our course book. Yeah, mm -hmm. Albina, correct. It might be course books. It might be um, workbook as well. Mm -hmm. It might be students' mistakes in their speech or students' mistakes in their writing. Uh, for example, uh, I've been taking notes for several weeks, uh, mistakes of all students in their speech, in pronunciation, and I'll give you one assignment mm -hmm. to actually produce, to pronounce those words and upload it to Google Classroom. You'll have to pronounce them. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, they might be ready-made uh, vocabulary, and tests uh, or vocabulary, uh, what's called reference books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So of course, yeah, of course, again, we should consult our syllabus, our learning outcomes. Yeah. So if it is, for example, if you're preparing our students for IELTS, and uh, then maybe we should find academic lists. And if it's academic IELTS, academic, yeah, uh, some uh, special word lists which we can uh, learn which are of great help and use. Yeah. And we, as we mentioned, yeah. And classroom language, yeah. Beginner, elementary, especially those phrases. You should teach classroom language first. I don't understand. Uh, can you speak more slowly, please? Uh, your pen. Yeah. Does anyone have a spare pencil? I don't know. Do you have a sharpener? Okay. in English. What is Rubashka in English? Yeah. How do you spell it? Yeah. And so on and so forth. So you should teach this class on language and you should test it. Because if you don't test it again, if you don't test those phrases, students keep and they might not know actually. Yeah. Which word should we choose if the students do not have a common syllabus? Which word should we choose if, we, if the students don't have a common syllabus? Uh -huh. Okay. If the students go to an English medium, frequent words, actually, yeah, active vocabulary, mm -hmm. frequent words, so not the word, yeah, frequent words. Uh, uh, and when you design a test, guys, you should um, always ask yourself a question. So I'm going to test this word, uh, and is it really worth it? Uh, are my students going to use it in their speech? If, if it is passive vocabulary, again, is it uh, quite passive, quite active passive vocabulary? Yeah. So the one that uh, students actually can meet in their real life. Yeah. Uh, this way, we should always ask these questions. Practicality. Practicality should be, uh, as we said, test should be practical, they should be meaningful, they should be useful, yeah, have beneficial backwash effects. And if you want mm, uh, your tests to have beneficial backwash effect, always think about its usefulness. How useful is this word that you're going to teach and test, yeah? Mm -hmm. If uh, the students go to an English medium university, then the items for the test can be chosen from academic vocabulary. So again, purpose, learning outcomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, do's and don'ts. What should we do and what should, shouldn't we do? Don'ts. Don't have your students memorize word lists. So never give just word lists. Yeah? Or never give, uh, like, uh, learn uh, all words starting from A in your mini dictionary. No, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, don't present words in isolation. Never. Again, we should. Uh, teach words in context. And we should give a few examples, not only one, but two or three examples when you use this word in the context. Uh, and don't use difficult grammatical structures in a vocabulary test because uh, that difficult grammar actually can hinder uh, students from answering correctly. Actually, students might know the answer, but they might be um, 
prevent it from giving correct answer by difficult grammatical structure. Yeah, so this is about reliability. Yeah, uh, Doctor Tuzi mentioned it if you remember. So there was a difficult grammatical structure, and students couldn't answer. Or vice versa, it might be a difficult word or phrase that students don't understand, and they can make a mistake in uh, grammatic grammar tests. Yeah. So make sure that uh, um, grammar and vocabulary don't uh, actually hinder each other, yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't stop students from answering correctly. Do's. Teach students to find the meaning of words through the context of a sentence. Yeah? We have a lot of exercises. We even have lots of exercises like this, where we read the text, and the text is divided into parts. Like There are numbers, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, 25 where they put there so that we can really we can uh, quickly find a line uh, and then the question is like what does the rise in line 25 mean yeah, students must find this, must look at the context and using the context they must guess the meaning of the word so you should um, you, can, we, you should practice it a lot actually uh, next one help increase comprehension by teaching important affixes yeah so negative affixes a noun adjective uh, adverb yeah so happy unhappy beauty beautiful noun adjective yeah uh, noun verb i don't know and so on and so forth yeah so we should teach our students uh, uh, ideally we should, when we teach a new word we should teach a family a family means the same word but in different in different parts of speech like a uh, wide adjective uh, widely adverb noun with uh, and verb for example widen yeah widen a word a, a, a road for example ideally yeah it's a good thing to teach uh, words in a family uh, the whole um, family so techniques let's go to techniques yeah one of the techniques is limited response we use it with uh, beginner level students because uh, yeah, it doesn't require them to speak you just only have to act and so it's like so we avoid the language skills that they haven't mastered yet let's continue with examples For example, we can use uh, physical responses, yeah, like, please, yeah, mm. Marcos, please, yeah, can you come up to the window, please, okay. go to the window, please, yeah, uh, hand me the chalk, or come to the board, yeah, uh, touch your nose, touch your head, yeah, you can even play a game, Simon says, yeah, uh, is the book green, yeah, or touch something green, for example. It's a very nice game as well. When you teach uh, objects or colors, yeah? uh, students have uh, run and touch uh, a specific color or uh, an object. Yeah? A very funny and nice game, by the way. Uh, and you can show a picture and say, is the boy sleeping or swimming? And students answer, say, sleeping, good. Yeah? Or you can even say, like, uh, the boy is sleeping. And students say, yes or no. Yeah? You can also use it as a group, group testing. Uh, usually we should start with a group because uh, testing with a group is um, less inhibiting, less frightening. Students don't, uh, are usually not afraid yeah, when uh, they answer as a whole class yeah, because they can uh, repeat after their peers yeah, and learn, actually learn in the same way. Yeah? And then later you can use uh, individual testing. So again, what can we use? We can use pictures. Yeah, for example, uh, use a command such. Now, draw a circle around a tree. So we give it a picture, and students have to draw a circle around the tree. Yeah? Put an X on every tool. So there are different tools. Like hammer, I don't know, screwdriver, uh, an X, and so on. Draw hands on the clock. When teaching time, you can use it as well. So there is, it's 3.30, and students have to draw uh, hands, yeah. Match my pictures. My friend is eating. 
So they put number one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the dog is running. They put a number two near the dog, for example, yeah, which is running, and so on. Advantages automated response. Well, it could. So it's oral, not written. Yeah, in many cases, mostly. Yeah, they can be written as well. But again, uh, mm, we actually don't use it for summative. Uh, usually, for summative uh, assessment, we usually use it for formative assessment. But if you wish, you can use it for summative as well. Why not? But still, it uh, causes less stress because all group students don't to write. Yeah. They don't have plots, and it can be scored easily and uh, objectively. Yeah, so you can see immediately if students understands you or not. Yeah, so you can immediately see it. If you, it will take a lot of time because you have to do it one by one, and they have like. A lot of friendship, it's just pictures, maybe exact pictures and sketches. Uh, the drawings, yeah, sometimes might be ambiguous. Yeah, for example, uh, an orange may look like a ball, uh, running may look like dancing or jumping. <laughs> uh, a dog might look, uh, I don't know, like a donkey or whatever. Uh, yeah, sometimes it happens. Yeah, if uh, you draw badly, yeah, you can use pictures. And find pictures. As I've mentioned, they allow teachers to test passive vocabulary because students don't have to produce those words, they just have to identify them. And the beauty of multiple choice test is that you can ask a lot of questions. Yeah. And it saves time in a quite uh, limited period of time, you can ask a lot of questions. And as I mentioned again, that these words again should be useful to your students, yeah, for um, reading, for listening parts, yeah, in the future. Another point remember, is that usually only content words are included in vocabulary tests. Yeah, there are function words and content words. Now, what's the difference? Content words they have a meaning, so they are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Function words, they have like prepositions, articles, um, like my, his, her, yeah. Uh, actually, function words, um, they relate to grammar. They are not vocabulary. Uh, yeah. Function words, they more relate to grammar because like prepositions of time, you know, it, it's more like uh, gr grammar, yeah, because we have to use them correctly. Uh, and of time, yeah, it's 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 not the count. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we've started how to design multiple choice tasks, and uh, the previous like the words must have uh, a similar meaning, yeah, when designing multiple choice tests. But contextually, should be they should be inappropriate, yeah. Uh, the structures, they should be of similar level. So if you, the answer is difficult, upper intermediate word, uh, the structures, the wrong answers should be an upper intermediate word. Yeah? They should be the same part of speech. If the uh, correct answer is adjective, wrong answers, the structures should be adjectives. Yeah? Do not use opposites, never. Yeah? Tro other synonyms, we use at higher levels. And this structure should be of similar length. If the correct answer is long, then wrong answer should be long as well. Uh, a lot of students actually forget about it. When they design their own test, they forget about it. For example, let's identify mistakes again. First one. Can you identify mistake in the first one? She had to help the weak old man up the stairs. What seems to be wrong in the first part? 
in the first sentence, I mean. Anybody? Could make comment? Different parts of speech, so often not. That's it. Well done, exactly. Yeah, slowly is uh, not adjective, yeah? Wisdom again is noun, yeah? Try is verb. All of them are different. <laughs> okay. Second one. She needs to get up earlier, so she is buying an alarm clock. She's buying an alarm clock. Yeah. Let's see. Uh huh. Easy to find the answer. Why is it easy to find, Albina? You're saying that it's easy. It is easy to find an answer, yeah. Synonym. Albina Turula writes with an article N. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Article. Mm -hmm. Good. Sometimes we. Mm -hmm. Just skip it. We don't notice that we use uh, hints in our uh, stem. So don't leave hints. You should write a slash n. Yeah. Uh, a lot of teachers forget. They just write a or n, one of them, and they leave a hint like this. All right. Next one. They needed lots of training to operate such sophisticated equipment. What seems to be wrong with this one? Level. Yeah, exactly. Different level. Sophisticated is a difficult word, but why is easy blue there very easy? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Length. Alina writes length. Well, length might be... Uh-huh. Okay. Four. She sent me the gift yesterday. Food, books, letter. Yeah. More than one answer is possible, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number five. They drove to work in their new car. Car, house, office, street. Five. They drove to work in their new house, car, office, or street. What seems to be wrong? Easy to answer. Inappropriate distractors. Yeah, Sumrat wrote inappropriate distractors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, implausible distractors. Yeah, weak distractors. Weak distractors. So you don't drive uh, in a house, you don't drive in an office, you don't drive in a street, right? Uh, you drive a car. Maybe you could use a horse, I don't know. <laughs> but you don't drive a horse, you ride a horse. Yeah. Mm. So it must be something plausible. You see how difficult it is to construct a multiple choice test. Now you're thinking about wrong answers. Well, what, what can I use? What, what shall I use? Yeah. Uh, or maybe bicycle. Yeah, you can ride bicycle. We drove to work. They drove, but we ride a bicycle, right? Yeah, we ride a bicycle. We don't drive it. Yeah, we ride a bicycle. So maybe bicycle could be used. Uh -huh. And then we have to think about two more distractors. So mm -hmm. quite difficult. Okay, question number six. She just hit his shin. Shin is a part of a leg. Is a part of a leg. So uh, here it refers to leg. Cousin fender fruit. Again. Um, Context, yeah? Context is missing. Maybe he hit his cousin, who knows? <laughs> yeah? But fruit, do you hit fruit? It doesn't make any sense, right? So again, weak distractor, uh, limited context. Yeah? And uh, we should use, well, if you use a leg, maybe you should use body parts. Yeah? Leg, I don't know, arm, um, waist. Yeah, for example, what else? Heads, whatever. Uh, use body parts instead, yeah? and then add context so that uh, it makes clear which uh, body part he hits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, he hit his, uh, I don't know, uh, face, face maybe. Well, and now he has a. A blue eye, for example, or bruise. If it's bruise, it's usually on your body, yeah? But if it's eye, it's black eye. Yeah? All right. 
Okay, seven. He plans to buy some candy for his mother as a birthday present. Answers can be right according to the missing context. Mm -hmm. To make some candy. Actually, yeah, he can make some candy, right? If he is a cook, if he likes. Mm -hmm. Several answers are possible. Mm -hmm. Alan is a very quiet student, quit student, and quid student. Question number eight. Yeah, it might look okay, but actually uh, it's more like a pronunciation test. Yeah? It's not about vocabulary checking, exactly, yeah? Arujan, uh Jarabikla -huh. writes, yeah. It's not a vocabulary test, exactly, you're absolutely right, Arujan. It's not a vocabulary test, it's a pronunciation test. Quiet, quiet, quit, quit. Yeah, so you're checking students' listening skills and um, ability to differentiate uh, those sounds. This is a vocabulary, uh, this is a pronunciation test. Don't uh, design vocabulary tests like this. Okay, question number nine. Uh, that boy is very unusual. He's a genius. And C is the correct answer. Length again. Yeah. It's the, the longest answer is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. You should uh, increase uh, destructors. All right, good. Well done. And now these are the guidelines for constructing multiple choice tests that we mentioned before. You should design multiple choice tests or whatever test, actually, whatever technique that you're using. You shouldn't design uh, constructed tests just one day before a uh, high stake exam. Yeah? You should maybe spend a week or several weeks. So first, write the stem, write the sentence, write the correct answer, because distractors will depend on that correct answer. Mm -hmm. Make distractors plausible answers. Possible means possible in real life, uh, logically possible. Yeah? They must be logically possible. Uh, however, they should be uh, inappropriate context. Yeah? Logically possible, but inappropriate because of the context. Uh, avoid writing poor alternatives just for the sake of writing. Okay? For example, you have, must write four alternatives and uh, you write three good alternatives and one is left, okay, okay. and you write something. Uh, Unrelated, yeah, just the fourth alternative, yeah. Don't do not do that. <laughs> uh, spend some more time uh, and try to create a good fourth alternative, or maybe you can ask your peers, your colleagues. Yeah, distractors should be familiar to your students, yeah. Uh, don't, very difficult text, text test that students actually don't know anything, yeah. So, and when we design the test, we usually design it on, on a specific topic. Yeah, we will learn vocabulary. For example, food. Yeah, so cook, boil, poach, mm, what else? Uh, fresh, um, frozen, yeah, and so on and so forth. So, usually teach mm, in chunks, and we should test in chunks, ideally, yeah. Uh, write distractors that are distinguished, but they're distinct from each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Avoid unnecessary repetition. Yeah. We mentioned that as well. State the problem or ask a question in a positive form. Yeah. If you use negative, uh, you should. You can use negative actually, but don't use it very often. From time to time, and when you use it, write not in capital letters. Not, which is not correct. For example, yeah. Which item cannot be used in kitchen, for example, or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, a task. You will have to design a test, like a test using these words. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I, you'll design a different test, not this one, because uh, you will. We don't have a lot of students nowadays. A lot of our students don't teach because of the pandemic. Yeah. I think we'll do it differently. Yeah, I'll upload homework to Google Classroom. Yeah. 
we will simply switch off your uh... okay thank you uh, I'll upload the assignment to Google Classroom I'll explain in detail All right so you shouldn't do this one uh, I'd like to show you other techniques that we can use in vocabulary So multiple choice yeah, that we know. You can multiple choice um, technique like this one. For example, fill in the blanks with appropriate words from the uh, list given. Yeah, but there is one mistake in this. Uh, there is one mistake in uh, this exercise. What what is it? Can you find a mistake? It's not about the sentences, uh, it's about technique. Exactly, all five words given. We need to add one more, exactly, because there are five sentences and five words. So the last words, actually, students will not have a choice. They'll just, there'll be one left, yeah? And they'll just fill in the gaps. This way, we need to add one more word. So there should be six words and five sentences, because when the last one is left, there should be a choice between two words. All right, good. Noun, adjective, or for example, adverb, or whatever. Well, this is more like a grammar test. This is actually a grammar test, the vocabulary one. Uh, but uh, if you'd like to use it, yeah, for grammar parts, it's also okay. When students have to identify what part of speech uh, the word is, depending on its uh, place, yeah, we can actually guess the meaning, the part of speech, uh, depending where the word is used. Another one. Choose a verb that goes with all three nouns, phrases, or below. Yeah, you know, we have it in Cambridge Advanced Exam uh, collocations, and they're actually quite difficult, you know. So, first one: a trip, a photo, a bus. Do we spend? Do we take? Or do we pass? We take it. Yeah, money. A day spent, yeah, pass an exam and wish you put one extra word again here for verbs, yeah, for words and uh, holly. A saver is another technique, it's also multiple choice, but uh, we save space, we don't write answers below it, we just each other and we use italics. And we use slash, yeah. So this technique is also possible. Of course, yeah. Opposites of the following adjectives using negative. Right from their memory, yeah. Loyal, unloyal, or disloyal. Yeah? Enthusiastic, yeah, logical, yeah? illogical, patient, impatient, yeah? and so on. All right, another one, uh, more difficult. This time you have to put the word in the correct part of speech. Yeah? For example, in the first one, the the depth yeah? of the swimming pool is two meters. Mr. Brown was a kind. What kind of woman? Do you know the answer? Mr. Brown was a kind. Motherly woman. Motherly. Motherly is not an adverb, it is adjective. It means mother like. Yeah, mother. Um, she was like a mother. Brotherly, for example. Brotherly hug. Yeah. Sisterly. Sisterly love, I don't know, yeah, sisterly support, yeah. Manly, yeah, she looks so manly, for example, yeah. Uh, fill in the gaps. Yeah. Complete each sentence with a word. Mm -hmm. Those are, here we have like, uh, phrasal verbs and the particle, yeah. 
mind out and so on. So you use one of these techniques uh, as your home assignment. Okay, uh, why, why am I showing it? I'm showing different, different types of techniques that you can use for testing vocabulary. And you'll be using two of these techniques. You will uh, select 10 words. You'll design a test uh, in using two different techniques. And you'll compare how students perform. Uh, how students perform in those uh, tests. You can use definitions like this. Here is things made of wood. Who is a carpenter? Yeah. If you want to leave a job, you resign. Yeah. He carries your bags for you in a hotel. Who is it? A porter. Yeah. And so on. Uh, yeah. Odd one out. But you must be very careful with odd one out because uh, you must make sure that there is only one way, only one way of uh, giving it the correct answer. Yeah? So there shouldn't be any alternatives <laughs> uh, for interpretation. Okay, so first one, soup, pizza, hamburger, and bowl. So which is different? Which is different? A bowl. Why? Yeah. Because it's because it's not food, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Okay, and uh, at the next lesson, I think I'll show you like, at next lecture. I'll show you mistakes that my students uh, made in when designing uh, vocabulary tests. Yeah. They're quite funny. But uh, yeah, I'll show them uh, next week at our next lecture. All right, this is it. Mm. So this is the end of our lecture. I will upload assignments mm. today, I think, yeah, today. And uh, you have to conduct those tests until our uh, until our seminars uh, this week, actually, guys. This week, All right? Because I didn't give you assignments for seminars this uh, week, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll have to uh, prepare them for this week. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult, actually. Uh, you can use your peers, your group mates, to conduct those tests. Mm -hmm. I'll explain everything in detail, so it's that, so it's clear. Well, thank you for joining. This is the end of our lesson. Uh, yeah, I'll record the video and I will upload it to our Google Classroom as well. So the second group can watch it and you can watch it as, mm, if you want to watch it later by yourself as well. Mm, thank you. And I'll stop recording.